In this video, I'm going to show you how to simply plug your Arduino in the USB port of a Raspberry Pi, get the data off of it, and then use that data in some really cool ways. And you won't need any programming, you won't need any networking, you just plug it in and start dragging stuff around. Let's get started. Okay, so I have a Raspberry Pi, I think this is a 3B plus or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You can use a one, you can use a, a zero if you want, but uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus plugged in to the network, which is completely optional, and it has power. If you want, you can connect up your monitor, keyboard, and mouse, that's fine. But basically, when you plug one of these things in, you want to consistently use the same port. So whatever Arduino I'm using, like let's say if I have one doing the temperature and humidity and another one monitoring my garage, then the temperature and humidity one will always go in this port and the garage will always go in that port. And so just be mindful of that when you do this. And so we're going to take this and we're going to take this Uno, generic Uno with that sketch on there and I'm going to plug it in to the bottom port. I tend to always use the, I tend to always go like this, one, two, three, four, just to remember which port I've plugged everything in. But now that it's plugged in, we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so at this time you have your Arduino connected to your Raspberry Pi via the USB port. I'm gonna assume that you have the Raspberry Pi turned on and we are going to access Node Red. Now there's two different ways to do that. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about both of them. So the first way is if you have a monitor keyboard mouse attached to your Raspberry Pi, you can do it through the user interface there. And so I'm gonna, I've got VNC connected, so this is going to look like crap, but basically um, I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi desktop. So there's a few things you want to know. One is uh, to get to Node Red, I'm going to do it the wrong way first. So if I were to come on here, if you haven't used Node Red before um, and, and you do this, you do 127.0.0.1 colon There's a good chance eh, at that time it ran. Of course it did. Um, if it didn't run, then what you would do is come here to the, the menu and programming and node red and what will happen is if you run it in the little terminal window which you won't be able to see it now it'll show you it'll give you a command of how to auto start node red when uh when your pi boots up but for the most part i think in the new ones it's auto started so that's not bad but if it isn't you can just come here to programming and node red so then you would access it by doing 127.001 and that's fine and the newer your Raspberry Pi is the better the user interface will feel doing it straight from the Pi. I tend to prefer to like to do it over the network so if you want to access it remotely from your network then it needs to be on the same network that your computer's on but basically you can hover over this up down thing and it's going to give you the IP address of your Pi, which is in my case is 192.168.95.104. You can ignore the slash 24. So I'm going to close this down. And then you can do the same thing over here. You can go to 192.168.95.104. Now, the main reason why I like to do this over the network is basically when you do it this way, you're not asking the Pi... To do, the, to do the work of rendering the desktop. Your personal computer, your laptop, your phone, whatever is rendering the desktop, and the Pi is just concentrating on Node Red. So anyway, that's a lot of talking about that stuff. What you came here for is to connect these ones. So by default, you should have these um, nodes over here called serial input and output nodes and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't, you can come over here to the palette manager manage palette and install and type in serial and the first one will be what you want node uh, node red node serial port but that should be installed by default if you're on a raspberry pi i'm using the latest version but i think going all the way back to jesse so i mean jesse buster you know all that like they, they all should have it so basically what's going to happen now is i'm going to double click on this and you see i don't have any serial ports on here so i'm going to hit the pencil and then I'm going to hit search and what it's going to do, it's going to bring up three options. Now <clears throat> the, the USB ports either show up as AMA or USB. Now I'm not sure which one it is at this point. So I'm going to just hit USB, take it, hope it's a good guess. And then the baud rate is your serial begin speed here. So I did 9,600. 
9600 doesn't sound very fast, but with the type of thing we're doing, that's plenty fast. So I'm gonna set that at 96, and then there's really nothing else you need to set. I'm gonna hit add, and then I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna, it's an Uno, so I'm gonna do Arduino Uno. Hit done and deploy, and you'll see that I'm connected. Now, if you weren't connected, then what you do is come back here and do the same add serial port thing again and select the AMA one. Uh, but the, the thing is with this is every single time you plug in your Arduino, you want to plug it in the same port on your thing. So generally what I do is I start at the one low by the network connector and then go high by the network connector and then do low away from the network connector and low and high away from the network connector. So I just have like a little system that the, the four of them that I connect go in that order. So I'm going to connect this to a debug node which I just drug in from over here. And I'm gonna to go to this little bug in the upper right hand corner. And when I click that, I'm gonna tell it to just show me current flow. And you could, if you get a bunch of things going on, I, it's it, to me it's easier to keep this on current flow. So I'm gonna hit deploy and we should see, yep, so we're starting to see those things come in. Uh, now they have the enter symbol at the end, so we'll see how that affects it. but. Basically, we see these things coming in every two and a half seconds where they have this H equals T equals and random equals. So we're getting our data, which is sweet. So what we want to do is we're going to break this. We're going to pull this out. We're going to break this and hit deploy. We'll clear this so we don't see all that other information. So now what we want to do is we want to begin parsing that data. So there's a lot of different things you could do. You could use JSON. You could use other things but we're, we're keeping this as absolutely simple as possible so we're going to use the switch statement and so what we're going to do is we are going to say that if it contains t equals then send it to the top little dot and then we're going to add another one and we're going to say if it contains h equals we're going to send it to the second one and if it contains random equals we're going to send it to the next one and then we're just going to put let's see I'll just leave that there I'm not going to do an else so basically it's only going to do something with it if it contains t equals h equals or random equals and just to remind you those are coming from here. T equals the temperature, H equals the humidity, random equals rand. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're, we're going to hit done and you're going to see there's going to be three dots here. So now we're basically what they call parsing that data so that it goes to these different things. Now in our situation, let's, let's do this. Let's drag this so that the only one that gets debugged is the random number. So when I hit deploy, we're going to see that the only one that comes up is random everything else gets thrown away so cool we're parsing data and so now we're, we're basically sending each one of these things on their own track so what that means is that we can come over here and we can use this change thing and let's stick with random for a second so we can stick with the change and we're going to come in here and we're basically going to say change and we're going to search for random equals and we're going to change it to nothing so basically we're going to strip out that random equals and now if i come here and hit this and hit deploy you'll see that now all of a sudden it's just giving us the random number now if we click on this you can see that it's not actually that 73 the little enter symbol isn't really in there it's just uh it's just telling us that that's the end of the line so i think we're good there so basically what we can do now is we can come here and we can paste this and we can make two more of these and we can change uh t equals to nothing and we can change uh with the h equals to nothing and so now We've got these three little things, and now we have our raw data back. Okay, so basically I've stripped that stuff out, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these back into the debug node so we can see what data we're getting. And now you'll see that we are getting just the raw data. And so we can see here that uh, 
you know, we're just getting raw data. We're not getting all of these other, we're not getting all the T equals H equals and all that kind of stuff. So one of the things we probably want to do is come in here and call this one temperature and call this one humidity and call this one random. Okay. So now we're deploying those. So we have our data here. We have the temperature, the humidity, and the random number going on here. They're all being parsed. We're down to just the raw data. So now what we can do is start making our user interface. So if you haven't followed any of my videos, you probably haven't installed Node-RED dashboard. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you have, you can skip ahead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Palette Manager and then we're going to go to install and we're going to type in um, dashboard. Okay, node red dashboard. This is the one right here, the second one. Node red dashboard install. It's going to take a minute, so I'm going to just pause the video. Okay, so what that did is that added a whole bunch of things down here. And um, this is real similar to what I've done in some other videos, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. But let's say that we want to. I'll tell you what, let's try this. Let's try a couple different ways to do it. So the first one we'll do is the gauge. And I'm going to double click this. And I'm going to tell it to add a new UI group, just like I did with the new serial port. And I'm going to add a new UI tab. And I'm just going to make it as wide as I can make it. I hate, <laughs> if you know, if you know how much I hate this thing, like it doesn't ever want to drag. So I'm going to get it close. There we go. We're going to take it and we're gonna get a great fan freaking tastic so anyway adding a new UI tab and we're good add let's see here that's 16 that's perfect Wish can you just type that no you can't type okay so we've got that now we have added this gauge and basically because our random number here is between 0 and 1000 we're gonna make our scale here between 0 and 1000 on this thing and then we're gonna get rid of the word units and we're going to give it a label of random number and we'll just call this random gauge so what we've done is we're going to make this gauge and it's going to bounce around as this number changes so if we come over here connect it to the random number hit deploy since installing this dashboard, we have a new thing. So you can basically take whatever you have up here, um, up to the 1880, and you can do this and put a UI at the end, and you'll see that now all of a sudden we have a gauge. And that gauge is gonna, is gonna bounce around based on how big the random number is between one and a thousand. So sweet, we're visualizing some data. So the other thing we could do, we could do a very simple uh, text one. Let's take this and we're gonna drag this together. We're gonna double click it and we're gonna call it temperature. And we're going to, I like this label style. And now if we click this, done, display, we come back here without even refreshing the page, we have the, the temperature showing up up here. And then we'll do one last one. Let's do, uh, I'll tell you what, let's play with this. Let's, I've never done this one before. So let's do chart. If I double click this and do, I'm going to do the last seconds. Uh oh. No, we'll do the last, let's do the last 10 minutes. I don't know. I'm, I'm making this up as I go. So we're going to call it humidity. And I don't know, we'll pick a color. Fantastic blue. I'm a fan of blue, and we will call it uh, humidity and done. Drag it together, hit deploy, come over here, and now let's see what happens. Oh, 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 we got a chart going on. This is cool. Okay, so all of a sudden now we're making a chart of the humidity over the last, I'm guessing, I think I put in an hour. And so as more data comes in, you'll notice we're not refreshing the page. It's just making a chart of this random humidity. And so very cool, very, very cool that in just a couple of minutes, we were able to do stuff with our data. Now, if you haven't played around with Node-RED, 
there's a lot of stuff you can do here. So in other words, let's let's take this same. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's let's take this random number here, and you can do some more logic on it. Like let's say you want to add another switch statement here. Now you can keep this connected here, but I can add a switch statement here, and I can basically say if it is greater than 900 do something and then if I can I can say if it's less than or equal to 900 do something else and so like let's say that in this situation I would want it to if my temperature or whatever that random thing represented it hit it was over 900 I might want it to email me and so like I could drag this out here and if it was over that then I would come in here and I'd I'd put in my Gmail information and it would email me if it ever hit that high or it could tweet something. You know, you can you can do all kinds of different things here with the logic. You could send this information to Watson IoT, you can blast out MQTT messages, all that stuff. But the the point is that in just a few minutes we we're able to plug this thing in no networking no crazy code and parse this data and actually do some fun stuff with it and get our charts and our and you can you can make these as fancy as you want but this is just a real simple uh simple way of doing it so anyway thanks for watching